operations, and supply chain management. Due to the length of the first topic, operations planning and control has been divided into subtopics. Implementation of the sales and operations plan provides an overview of strategy and operations planning and control. Controlling priorities addresses master scheduling, rough cut capacity planning, and resource planning. Materials and inventory addresses materials, such as materials requirements planning and distribution requirements planning. Capacity addresses capacity management, planning, and control, time horizons of capacity management, capacity requirements planning, and production activity control. The organization's sales and operations plan is implemented on the supply side of the organization through a production plan. The production plan is a high-level view of future production requirements over a planning horizon of 12 to 18 months. The projections are made by product family, often grouped by similar manufacturing processes and are generally stated as a rate of production, such as units per period of time. The strategic plan is the basis for the production plan, clearly identifies the company's mission, goals, and objectives, and sets the high-level direction of the organization, including broad goals for market share, revenue, profits, and growth. Business plan is the parent of every operations planning and control activity. An organization's business plan states organizational strategy in more specific terms and sets goals for achieving the strategy over the next one to three years or more. The business plan specifies how value will be created for both customers and owners and what the results should be in terms of market share, revenue, cash flow, profits, and measurements, such as customer satisfaction. This exhibit provides an overview of how business planning, based on organizational strategy, is used to develop a consensus demand plan and a production plan in sales and operations planning, based on inputs from the demand and supply sides of the organization, the left and right columns. The center column below sales and operations planning shows the supply side outputs. The production plan, based on a consensus demand plan, is developed to guide master scheduling, which produces a master production schedule and plans for the necessary raw materials in material requirements planning and for controlling production and scheduling assembly. The high-level demand side activities of forecasting and demand management. The distribution requirements planning process involves determining the inventory replenishment needs at branch warehouses. The high-level supply-side activities start with resource planning which determines the need for capital investments or modifications to capacity. The remaining activities in the right column address whether evolving plans are feasible from an operations capacity standpoint. After the collaborative process of sales and operations, planning, master scheduling creates a master production schedule that will commit the firm to produce specific products on particular dates. A schedule format that includes time periods with dates, the forecast, customer orders, projected available balance, available to promise, and the master production schedule. The master scheduling grid as illustrated in this exhibit, calculates a projected available balance and available to promise amounts for demand prioritization purposes, and it also calculates the master production schedule for operations purposes. Material requirements planning plans, dependent demand items, the raw materials and components needed to produce finished goods for consumers. Material requirement planning is a set of techniques that uses bill of material data, inventory data, and the master production schedule to calculate requirements for materials. While independent demand is the subject of demand forecasts, dependent demand is not. 
before you can talk about dependent demand for pockets and zippers and bolts of denim, there has to be independent consumer demand for pants, or at least a demand plan based on the assumption that there will be a demand for those pants. There can, however, be independent and dependent demand for the same item. For example, an item may be used as a component in finished production, but also sold independently as a repair part or upgrade item. Dependent demand does not require estimation, only calculation. Capacity management enters the picture, along with its companions, capacity planning and capacity control. The overriding goal of capacity management is to keep demand and supply in harmony by ensuring that the network contains the right amount of capacity in the right configuration to serve customers in a cost-effective manner. Capacity planning involves identifying required resources and selecting methods of making capacity available when needed. And capacity control takes place at the level of everyday activity. It is a form of input or output control. A primary objective of capacity management is to balance capacity with load. Too little capacity. Demand at that point in the chain will exceed supply and you will either have to add capacity, if that is possible, shift work elsewhere, or endure stockouts and broken orders. Too much capacity. If you overbuild at a work center, supply exceeds demand. The oversupply led to enormous write-downs, plunging stock prices, bankruptcies, and layoffs. Just the right amount. When you get capacity management right, supply and demand stay close to perfect balance. Deadlines are met, orders are filled on time with quality items, overtime is minimal or non-existent, and making optimal use of labor, equipment, and space. Measuring performance of supply from internal resources can provide benefits such as the following. Control of processes and employees. Reporting to managers and external sources, for example, financial reporting. Communication of expectations and problems. Learning and continuous improvement. Performance measures should be objective, consistent and quantified. Some key operational measures include the following. Percent master production schedule, completed as scheduled. Number of time fence violations. Production yield, standard or maximum yield versus actual yield, due to scrap, waste, or other shrinkage. Quality metrics. And inventory turnover broken down by raw material turns, etc. Academy for International Modern Studies is a UK-based globally recognized institution in supply chain management studies. AIMS offers following programs through interactive learning. Certified Supply Chain Expert. Master Diploma in Supply Chain. MBA in Supply Chain Management. For details, please visit aims.education.